Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. We are here to, uh, well, uh, je présente aujourd'hui uh, un projet européen, c'est uh, BIM uh, for, four, four, quatre, for EB. BIM for EB, BIM for EB is, uh, we have to use uh, English for. Uh, alors, uh, vous êtes uh, beaucoup de vous, de vous, vous êtes uh, français. Uh, L'idée, c'est de créer, uh, on peut dire, des différents uh, tools uh, uh, qui utilisent BIM, le modeling, pour uh, venir innovation, so, uh, pour l'utiliser sur le, le, les bâtiments construits. But I have to speak English because that's a European project, and I, I welcome with me uh, uh, Dimitrios Bilouris from the European Commission, is the project officer of uh, the project. Thank you, Dimitrios. Then we have Eva Lotta Kirkinen from uh, RISE in Sweden. Uh, I will show you fast mapping tool. Then we have Davide Madeddu from one team. He has developed the beam management system. Here we will see. Uh, Brian from uh, Cork, you are Ireland, uh, about BIM CPD, and then uh, Marco Kiviniemi uh, speaking about uh, two tools, uh, BIM Easer and BIM Planner. Then after, we will have the Andrea Manini is there. He will enter from Polytechnico and uh, introduce to you BIM for occupants. Uh, well, uh, okay, we can go to the next slide. Uh, well, uh, that's the general objective of the project is to create a toolkit uh, to make the, the flow of information efficient and to decrease working time and costs. Later, we will see maybe some results about KPIs we have reached in reduction of timing and cost, improving performances, quality, and energy performances, in particular comfort. Uh, some specific tools are dedicated to uh, create 3D modeling, so in particular fast mapping tools developed in Sweden, uh, and uh, introduce uh, uh, ontologies uh, in order to allow uh, the application of different tools for the whole renovation activity. A specific uh, uh, activity is dedicated to guidelines for BIM implementation, and what is interesting, uh, we have dedicated uh, a lot of work on uh, a common data environment, the beam management system, which is based on open interoperable uh, beam, so the standard is IFC uh, at international level. We can go to the next. That's the, uh, our partnership. Uh, for Italy, we have, uh, of course, Politecnico di Milano. I am from Politecnico di Milano. And with me, uh, there is also there Alberto Pavan, is the chairman of uh, BIM Standard uh, Group and is also representing Italy uh, in SAN442 and ISO. Uh, I, Alberto, uh, he's there, there, he's there. <laughs> and uh, uh, with me, Region Lombardy. I don't know if there is uh, uh, Jews, if they are arriving in any case. Uh, we are a little later. One team, Davide. Uh, in Italy, uh, then uh, Sol Intel. I see. I saw Hugo. Hugo is there. Leave your hand. The Hugo is there. Is responsible for uh, exploitation activity uh, in Spain. Uh, Ace Larissa. Where is Larissa? Larissa is there. She is uh, the Architect Council of Architects uh, in Europe in Brussels. Is uh, responsible for dissemination and communication. She is there from Brazil. And uh, uh, Ireland, Brian. Brian, uh, I don't know if you want to take the microphone just to introduce uh, Ireland and Cork. What you are representing not only university, please. Uh, sure, Bruno. So I'm I'm a research researcher with the International Energy Research Centre, and we are like mainly focused on building energy and grid grid and system energy, but also looking at regulations and policy and. Um, looking at digitalization of the energy sector, which is where we mainly focus. 
Um, so the research centre is part of Tyndall, Tyndall National Institute, um, which is part of University College Cork. Okay, then we go to Sweden. Uh, Eva Lotta, uh, if you want to introduce RISE and also the cooperation with uh, CGI, please. Yes, uh, Eva Lotta Kurkinen, I'm from Sweden and working at the Research Institute of Sweden. Uh, we have uh, developed a new fast mapping toolkit that I am going to show you today, together with CGI, who is also a company in Sweden. Thank you, Eva. Then we go to Finland, Marko Kiviniemi, please. Hello, uh, I'm coming from VTT, that is a multidisciplinary research organization in Finland. This uh, team related research is one part there, and uh, we have been developing two tools that, that will be presented today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I see from Poland, uh, Alexander and Yaroslav, they are responsible for uh, demonstration activity, uh, and, uh, but we have to go. Uh, please go to the next slide. Well, that's the toolkit. The focus is the, the core, the beam management system. Later, uh, David will introduce to you the beam management system. But uh, you see, uh, that's created as a common data environment to share not only uh, beam, but also all the data using linked data and ontologies with, uh, uh, among uh, the tools and among different stakeholders through coming from the uh, facility manager, the owners, uh, designers, and constructors. And also the occupants, uh, that's uh, very interesting, the last uh, stage. Uh, and uh, considering uh, the, the, the decision process, the, the world renovation process, of course, the fast mapping tools is the first one, scan to beam in order to create uh, the model. And we will see with uh, uh, Eva Lotta a specific uh, device we have developed uh, to reconstruct uh, the ducts and uh, what is not possible to see in the walls. Uh, and uh, after this, the decision making uh, beam easier, uh, which is important using different energy scenarios for this taking decisions about the interventions. Then we have two software for design, uh, beam CPD, uh, later with uh, Ireland or uh, Cork, uh, for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, and Alteras about uh, box, building automation and control system. And then finally, we go to the facility management and uh, the renovation works management, beam planner, uh, with VDT. And uh, what is interesting, the, the, this is based on a location-based planning. It's not a normal one. It's based on IFC modeling. And interfaced with uh, beam for occupants developed by Suite 5 to involve the occupants in the management of uh, the intervention, but also uh, to allow them to know about energy saving and comfort data. We can go on. Okay, that's the project uh, activity. We have developed in the first year requirements, linked data and ontologies. Uh, linked data and ontologies are the uh, innovation about BEAM. We are going towards digital twin, and we are speaking about digitalization, about uh, building a bit environment, not more uh, BEAM only. And uh, we have developed uh, the tool, and now we are demonstrating, validating in the three demo sites, uh, Monza, Poland, and uh, Italy, Poland, and uh, Finland. Next slide. Uh, that's the objectives. Just run off very quickly the, the cheapest one to maximize efficiency in time, cost, quality, and energy. Accelerate the market uptake about Europe toward the digital bit environment. We were discussing also today with uh, Dimitrios and uh, Hugo and David about this uh, important uh, goals at European level. Of course, introducing uh, uh, GIS, uh, GIS, but also construction companies. The problem is in Europe is uh, the highest uh, amount of uh, SME, the small and medium enterprises, and that uh, a, a strong work is to be done about digital divide. We can go on. Uh, speed up data gathering and processing. That's why we have introduced uh, uh, a lot of tools to gather data and to manage this data. And interoperability. Interoperability is fundamental because uh, if we don't think about open and interoperable tools and software, we cannot go on because uh, you cannot depend on one software. 
uh, that's very important. Oh, well, expecting the impact, uh, renovation business based on beam, that's what we are doing also today, for example, but uh, economics, that's what uh, we are discussing with Hugo, uh, exploitation, uh, jobs, that's new jobs. We were discussing about new jobs in uh, Europe and uh, throughout uh, the whole uh, um, different uh, application of BEAM. Environmental aspects. Of course, in this project, we, we consider energy, but uh, we have to consider going on uh, CO2 emission. But we have some uh, issue, some specific tools related with measuring CO2 and uh, pollution, uh, uh, social quality, and lower cost. Of course, uh, in future, we were discussing about LCA and LCC, so life cycle costing and life cycle assessment. That's the next steps we are going on. Please? Well, that's me, but uh, I, I will leave uh, the word to Dimitrios Villures, and I'm uh, very glad for his presence. Please come. The, no news. Uh, he's representing European Commission. He's the project officer, and it's uh, a pleasure to introduce him. And uh, uh, I leave him the word. Thank you, Bruno. Thank you very much for being here. Actually, this is a very interesting setting. I did not expect this. So you can hear me better now. Thank you. It's a very interesting setting. The way that the whole setup is here. So my name is Dimitris Biljuris. I'm the project advisor of the Beam for EB. And uh, I'm monitoring the project from the conception until the end one. So I'm going to have a very quick presentation, because I don't want to take the time from the technical aspects of the project, presenting of HADEA, which is the executive agency who is funding the agency. And then I'm going to speak a bit about the policy regarding renovation and the renovation wave in Europe. And also I give you a glimpse of how you can access, go and access the funding opportunities on Horizon Europe. So very briefly, HADEA, the European Health and Digital Executive Agency, is a, a new agency from the last year and is being tasked with implementing programs and initiatives on behalf of the European Commission. So what in principle do? Can I go one back? How, one second? OK, perfect. Excellent. So what HADEA does, what is our role? We are in the course of the full cycle of project management. So we're doing evaluation of proposals, grant agreement preparation, project follow-up, and at the end, policy feedback. So at the current uh, time frame of uh, BIM for EEB, we're taking the results of the project, and we give it as a feedback back to the commission to see if there is a need for further funding for the same sector or different areas. So basically, each project, depending on the result, there is a future for more money being funded on the same sector. We are positioned in all the Green Deal European Union policies, and we are having a very big uh, focus and interest in the innovation way for Europe that has a key words of greening our buildings, creating jobs, and improving lives. So basically what the Commission did, it took the literature status of the current situation. We see that buildings are responsible for 40% of energy consumption and an equal amount of greenhouse emissions. The innovation rate is very low, and we have to speed up that renovation rate in Europe with a much faster pace and with a better feedback for European citizens. So we want to double that in the next 10 years. This will be translated not only to the higher results of energy and building conditions, but also results such as uh, increased job and uh, opportunity, business opportunities in Europe. In order to do that, the strategy is being prioritizing in three action areas. Decarbonization of heating and cooling, tackling energy poverty and worst performing buildings, and also renovation of the public buildings. Oh, I skipped one, but the, I just wanted to go that the key actions in order to achieve these goals it has to do with regulation, so being standards that are all common around Europe, so everybody can do business understanding each other, and then give a better incentive for funding, and both for public and private sector renovations. And then this, targeted fund this funding should be more targeted 
and that's why the different uh, financial instruments of the European Commission have been created in order to provide this funding. One of those would be the next generation EU. So we want to increase the capacity of projects being able to do their innovation, both on the technical assistance, and that will be done with new skills in the digital environment, and then sustainable construction products and services. So we're talking about the integration of new materials in a renovation, nature-based solutions that will lead the next innovation wave. At the same time, there is the new European Bauhaus, which is another initiative of creating a context of uh, green living in the cities based on the quality of life and also on the quality of the energy of the buildings. And that would be also be translated in small neighborhood-based approaches where we can create zero energy district hubs and affordable housing initiatives. One aspect and one method of doing so is the Horizon Europe funding program where this is a small glimpse of the budget that Hadea, the European Executive Agency, is funding and the areas where the money are being given. And we're talking about 20 billion before and you have to expect another 1.6 billion available for the next generation EU fund. This is a huge amount of money. And in order to be able to have access to some of those, I would invite all of you that are interested to enter the funding and tender opportunities portal where you can register your organization, see potential funding. Every two years there is a new program in different areas and also search for other project results and also work as an expert to be able to evaluate these proposals. A simple key search of renovation can give you directly the upcoming funding and tender opportunities where you can actually apply for funding. And that's all for me and I will let the consortium present the results. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dimitrios. Now we can go to Sweden, Eva Lotta. Oh, B management system, sorry. Uh, to come back to Italy, Davide, uh, speak with about uh, uh, the B management system and uh, form one team. So, Davide, uh, well, as I told you, that's about a common data environment, but it's not only a common data environment, you will see. Please go. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I speak about. Uh, the beam management system, as you've seen before in the slide, is the core uh, part of the, the project in terms of the tools. Um, okay, as you see in this file, the optimal information management is the critical part of every project. If we cannot manage the information very well, uh, we could hinder strategic decision. What does mean? this mean? This means that uh, is needed something to store all the data. This is the call uh, uh, as a common data environment. It's a buzzing word uh, in uh, these years. As you see also in the, in the fair, there's so much uh, software solution about that. And uh, what we do in the project is uh, basically starting from scratch, creating an open source common data environment that can uh, uh, work for all the tools and uh, exchange data for uh, every tools. Uh, this is the main page uh, of uh, the common data environment for the beam management system. And uh, uh, is the part uh, where uh, uh, the people an, can access to all the data stored in the project. Basically, uh, we develop uh, some features, some functionalities, more of them uh, starting from, uh, for example, from user management, uh, role management, uh, and also uh, to the part of uh, resource management. And uh, we go through, for example, important features to connect uh, the common data environment to the external tools like APIs, Parkwell, um, endpoints. One of the main uh, functionality of the beam management system as a common data environment is to provide uh, functionalities to uh, uh, manage resource, manage the possibility for the users to upload, download, and share uh, documents. Every kind of documents you can upload, for example, PDF, IFCs, uh, docs, uh, uh, every kind you want to upload, you can uh, uh, do with that. There are some functionalities that allow to uh, work uh, in compliance 
with the recent BIN standards, like 196050. Uh, this is the most recent of ISO standards for uh, managing BIM. And uh, as open source, the solution can allow to uh, manage, for example, the uh, revisions, um, permissions to share uh, documents with each other, with the other uh, part of the teams, and also check in and check out the documentation uh, to allow and to lock in uh, the document for uh, prevent uh, that more user can edit the same document, uh, creating, for example, what we know as a conflict copy, okay? And uh, with this system, we can avoid about that. As we say that uh, in, the, in the project, typically we use, uh, for example, models, IFC models. You have uh, obviously uh, a IFC viewer that is based uh, also from uh, uh, open source library. Uh, here the user can uh, uh, navigate through the model, can see, for example, the hierarchy of the model, uh, the properties of the items. And then also we can include uh, another important feature that can localize the resources, like for example, doc not only the uh, buildings, but also documents inside uh, um, a geographically uh, map. In this side, uh, for example, is uh, an example of uh, one of the um, demo buildings uh, in the project. This is uh, based in uh, Monza, near Milan. And uh, as you see, uh, the user can catch and fetch all the data that is the, uh, coming from neighbors of the building. Uh, we can, for example, uh, retrieve data. This is the um, Wikipedia information. You can retrieve data from uh, uh, open servers available on the internet. And this data can be used, for example, for design phase or for managing phase. Uh, we use this kind of uh, information uh, using the uh, functionalities of uh, linked data and allow to uh, improve uh, uh, the data available inside the, the documentation available from, uh, from the designers. Another important feature is to implement inside the BIM, uh, the BIM models, the possibility to integrate the IoT data coming from devices, for example, measurements uh, inside the apartments or the weather, and the user can uh, is be able uh, to select uh, uh, the spaces, the apartments, and see which are the measurements in terms of uh, temperature, humidity, and uh, behavior of uh, the, the users in terms of uh, uh, how they can uh, work or how they can uh, uh, live inside the apartments. Uh, these are one of the functionalities, as you see, is uh, completely open source. You can uh, navigate through the, the model, uh, make uh, uh, sections uh, or uh, view on the top and navigate through inside uh, the buildings and so on. Another important thing is that uh, as we store data inside the building, we uh, can use this data as a building logbook. The building logbook is most important uh, uh, in these days because we can trace all the changes inside the buildings. For example, uh, uh, for the main maintenance purposes, we can uh, uh, trace all the changes in the uh, equipment uh, or devices inside the building and have the history that is the most important for maintenance uh, to be keep track of uh, all the information, for example, uh, the reports or any kind of uh, guidelines for uh, do the maintenance inside. And uh, as we know, for the CAD stand can the can standards uh, request uh, the possibility to share the data with others, but at the same time uh, uh, start the approval workflows. What do you mean? Mean that uh, there is uh, someone that can approve the work for uh, another one people, and this could be traced and uh, in uh, historically um, changes are completely available and uh, the people know what is changed, who, is, who made the change, and when this change is made. We talk about uh, linked data. Linked data is uh, another uh, technology that, as the terms say, is uh, to link the data together. Uh, it's not easy for the uh, basic users, like designers and, and uh, the people, the normal people. But uh, behind the system, there's the possibility to create a linked data. Basically, you can link any kind of document with other data that is uh, available in external sources. This can happen uh, using uh, what is mean uh, the SparkWell queries. This basically is a system that uh, you can query other servers around internet, mainly could be public or private uh, storage, and bring the data back to your project. 
And this could be, for example, there are more data, especially in northern countries, that is available for free, this completely uh, published, where you, you can find, for example, the uh, building code of your town. And you can uh, search the data uh, near your building automatically, uh, basic on the location in latitude and longitude uh, or the address of the building. You can bring this data back and connect. This could be useful, for example, in design or also in renovation, because you can say what is the value of your renovation in this place. Uh, one of the important results applying this kind of a technology that I remember is uh, open source, we release at the end of the project as uh, open source, is the possibility to uh, avoid the bottleneck. The bottleneck, uh, as, you s as you know as a professional, is when you uh, upload, download something, convert something, for example, in uh, from a native file to IFC, and you can share with someone, and you have to convert every time. And if you want to use the IFC, you have to download and also reconvert, okay? And uh, we uh, apply a workflow where if uh, in the changes is not uh, uh, involved the geometry, the geometry remains the same, uh, almost the time in renovation, the geometry is the same, but it's just changing data Inside the like, for example, properties and some uh, so uh, data as like that, we can uh, make these changes using API. Basically, all the data changes in the beam management system happen with APIs, and you can change just uh, you can uh, request and respond the data from server and your application uh, in uh, uh, in a couple of milliseconds, not minutes, but in milliseconds, and we can result about. Uh, 17% uh, of time reduction when you exchange that with others. And uh, we apply that with the other tools, not only the tools in the, in the project, as you see in the next uh, presentations. Uh, and for example, when you share data with the other professionals that maybe work with the Gantt for time uh, uh, management uh, or uh, cost and management, you can sh exchange data as just with REST API. And, uh, oh. As you see in, uh, okay, come back one. We also try the system to connect, for example, the beam management system, it is an open source tool, with the most common, uh, one of the most common uh, uh, beam authoring tool, that is Revit. And we're able to connect uh, the two systems. And uh, here, for example, the design can create uh, IFC space or IFC zones or groups inside the IFC that is uploaded in cloud online in the beam management system, in terms of milliseconds, the user on the other side can uh, see the changes that you have done in Revit. Like for example, the most uh, best known commercial solutions that are available on the market. And this is very, very uh, a system that uh, you can uh, reduce uh, the, um, the loss of time during these situations. And the last uh, is, a la uh, is also the possibility to retrieve data from uh, IoT devices, like for example, measurements. And you can create, for example, the uh, profile of the occupancy of the temperature inside the building. I'm finished. Thank you, Davide. Well, uh, when, uh, thank you, Davide uh, and one team. Before uh, Eva Lotta uh, is coming, uh, Alberto Pavan. Uh, is from uh, Uni Standard. Uh, okay. Yes. And uh, uh, I asked him to say something about standardization exploitation activity in the project. Uh, s only a few minutes to say that uh, in Friday, uh, the SAN 442 VG4 confirmed me uh, the result of Beam 4AB and the result of the other sister project. Uh, uh, use uh, semantics and linked data will be used to start a new standard about semantic and linked data and verticalization in the building, so in renovation, in building, in project, in design, and so. And we start with the result of uh, Horizon Europe uh, project to write a new standard 17632 about semantics and linked data. So I think this is uh, one of the big results of Beam for the B because uh, it's working together with uh, the Horizon project uh, and uh, the SAN and the standard in Europe. Thanks.
Thank you, uh, Alberto. Then I leave the word uh, to Eva Lotta from uh, RISE, speaking about the fast mapping tool. Yes, thank you. Uh, I will continue to talk about uh, a fast mapping tool that will provide the BIMS system with information. Uh, we call this tool fast mapping tool because that's the purpose of it. Um, and the object is to, with this tool, easier obtain documentation of the construction, of the existing construction. If you are going to do a renovation, you need to know what you have in the, be be uh, in the beginning of the building. Uh, and except of the geometry of the building, you also need to know where you have electrical cables, where you have beams, um, where you have different materials in the walls, etc. So that's the purpose with this tool, to easier get this information. And how is this done? It's done uh, by first using a laser scanning to scan the room or the apartment. And thus, this scanning creates a point cloud. This point cloud contains of points. Uh, the computer doesn't know what the point is. It, it's just points. And there is where <coughs> the AR glasses, augmented reality glasses, comes in. Uh, because we load this point cloud in the glasses. And that makes that we can see both the point cloud and the reality at the same time. And then we have the possibility inside the glasses to detect and define what should be what. But as you see on the picture, we still only see what, what is visible. We see the walls, the floor, and the roof. But we can't see what's in it, because we would like to have more un, uh, in our information. Oh, well, there it's come. It's this. We call it a sensor stick. It's a quite simple and easy tool. It contains of four different meters. One meter who detect temperature at the surface, and one who detect electricity, voltage, and one who detect capacitance, and one inductance inside, inside the wall. And when I use this on the wall and have the HoloLens on, you can see it's a QR code on it. That makes the HoloLens to read it and know where it is in position. So with this one, I have the possibility to record what's inside the wall. So I get a detection where I have high temperature, where it's high electricity, and then I can understand what's behind the wall. Probably there is an electrical cable, or probably there is a beam or something. This is shown in this, this way. This is how it looks like when you have the HoloLens on. You can see to the right in this picture a lot of different colors. Because one meter gives a specific color. So then you can see what it is. And I also have the possibility to turn off and turn on the different meters. So if I only are interested in electricity, I could let that meter be on and the other off. And then I only have the color of the electricity. And when I can see those colored dots within the HoloLens, in the point cloud, then it's quite easy for me to, to define and say that there is an electrical cable or there is a beam. So I can get that information and also turn that information into the BIM system so that we have everything stored on one place. Here you can just see some pictures of uh, beams created out of the, uh, the result from the sensor stick. Uh, and this is a final result of a very simple, simple building. Uh, before I finish, I will just say that everything is not developed in this project because the laser scanning and also the HoloLens, they are equipment that already exists. So what's new in this project, it's this sensor stick 
and also the software who connect all those devices to each other. And after this presentation, I will be in our monitor A38 if someone are interested and would like to look at it more. Thank you. Thank you a lot. May I ask uh, Alexander from Brokem Holland the opinion about demonstration activity? Uh, please come here, Alexander. Uh, he's uh, the responsible of WordPress in Amban 8 about demonstration activity, and uh, uh, he also assisted and uh, demonstration of these tools uh, by uh, fast mapping tool by Evalotta. If you want to say something about uh, Evalotta uh, activity and uh, demonstration, but also in general demonstration uh, activity. Hi, Alexander. Thank you, thank you, Bruno. Uh, I'm Alexander. I'm personally I'm architect. Uh, Prochem is company from Poland. Uh, dealing with AIC industry. Uh, we are work package eight leaders. Uh, we are responsible for develop toolkit uh, demonstrations on uh, dedicated pilot sites, which is uh, one was in Poland, uh, Italy, and Finland. Um, the demonstration process was, was very interesting from our point of view. Eva just presented the fast mapping toolkit which I was, I can call some kind of virtual inventory process uh, tool. Uh, we, are, we are also dealing with resources management like uh, Beams platform and uh, other dedicated tools for the, for the energy analysis and uh, construction site uh, planning uh, up, uh, improvement. Uh, of course, everything is connected with uh, renovation process according to BMI approach. So uh, mm, this is this is uh, this was very interesting uh, from me as an architect point of view, and uh, and uh, in relation with BMI technology approach. So the results are uh, quite positive uh, about the toolkit, and uh, I think uh, uh, we are we are uh, showing the the future in our our uh, toolkit development. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, you have to remember to know that Prokem is very important uh, company in Poland uh, as uh, uh, facility management. Uh, uh, they have a very important technical team uh, as uh, architects and engineers because there is also uh, Yaroslav is no, will come later. Thank you. And, uh, but uh, we go to Finland uh, with Marco, Marco Kiviniemi from VTT. We go to, well, we have created uh, the Moodle with uh, the help of the tool developed in Sweden. I see Moodling, of course, and then the point is to create the first uh, uh, decision about uh, the scenarios uh, for renovation. That's the b measure tool uh, presented by Marco and VTT. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, first of all, I have to say, I have not been involved in developing this work, work but uh, I'm, uh, the major persons at VTT are Jari Semeikka and Teemu Mätästniemi described in this list. And, uh, I make this presentation here. Background is that uh, there are existing very high quality uh, energy simulation and indoor condition tools that are used in, in the field, but those are quite uh, technical and require uh, competencies and those are not used in early stages of, of the design process. And that's where we recognize that as our uh, interest is, is to reduce the uh, energy consumption. We have to make some uh, clever decisions early in the renovation project. And the major idea here is that uh, firstly, we have to create a baseline model for, uh, as we have an existing building with uh, uh, measured uh, energy consumption, we have this uh, IFC model for uh, to be used in, in the simulation, we can create this baseline model, putting that uh, data in, in a simulation tool and verify that the uh, uh, simulation model produced uh, uh, same same uh, baseline 
data that is uh, measured from the, the uh, from the building. And the new approach here that was developed was this second point here to create a, a front-end tool for this uh, simulation uh, tool to create renovation scenarios, to create the alternative um, options, what could be uh, renovated. And the fine, fine uh, or new, new idea here is that, that this uh, renovation scenario tool have a, a database that has cost information and also the needed data to simulate the scenarios results in, in the simulating tool. And this will conclude in this third point here. In that way, we can make an impact to select right uh, or, or let's say optimal renovation program, renovation measures to be implemented in the detailed design and at site. Here is a user interface for our tool. And uh, I'm proud of this, that this will invite someone who will is willing to develop this in a uh, practical and, and commercial application. This is something that researchers has, have been putting in one scene, all the needed data. But uh, in this sense, we, as this our project has been a research and innovation action, we are trying to make improvement uh, or in make uh, some kind of um, knowledge about the, is this method working and not concentrated on, on uh, refined uh, user interfaces. The main topic here is in the middle of the part. In the left, there are uh, a list of uh, those uh, uh, energy renovation measures, individual measures, something that uh, is possible to do to reduce the uh, reno uh, energy consumption. Okay. For example, the first one, if you can see there, is air-to-air -air heat pump for space cooling and heating. Installation of heat pump for each uh, apartment. It is a one measure. Idea is that from this, uh, this measure, list of measures from this database, we can create uh, scenarios and uh, calculate together those as, as a whole. On the right-hand side, there is this scenario uh, box. In this scenario box, there is a button simulate. When we have selected those uh, uh, measures, create some scenario to be simulated, we get the results on the lower part. First line there is a, a calculation of this baseline that is describing the situation in the building currently. And uh, below that, there are some, some uh, uh, results of each scenario and uh, in this way it is quite uh, easy to compare and make some some selection of those uh, scenarios that are needed. At this phase we have not selected nothing yet we are creating some some uh, comparable information and okay I can uh, in the last slide I, I do have uh, some more detailed list of those uh, uh, attributes in there. And the idea in this software is that the, we can collect the design team in single or at least or just few meetings to run this kind of a simulation in that meeting. It will not require different, uh, uh, um, let's say, activities. Of course, some, some preparation, but the idea is that the design team could, could create the scenarios, simulate those, and make the decision what will be the uh, renovation program in, in, in this project. And uh, as you can see, we uh, read or retrieve some data from BIM management system, make the scenarios, but also return the data to the BIM management system. And we are following some uh, ontology, ontology deep, uh, described uh, or developed in this project and, and upload that in, in that way in, in the management system, where it is available to the further activities. And um, I will, I jump directly to this slide. We make some comparisons in practice, how much uh, time is needed for 
making this uh, energy simulation with this kind of a tool. It is the left mode colum column there. In the middle is a measured, uh, measured column, or measured data from uh, experience, experience person has made a si uh, simulation. And we believe that we can reduce dramatically the uh, time needed for energy simulation. And here is a list of, all of those uh, measures that we calculate and, and get from the simulation. And of course, as what I said, there are some, some results for time reduction, but also uh, there are some needed activities to, to develop in, in the software. But as I said, this is uh, some research uh, software, and we are willing to uh, develop it further if someone is interested. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Marco. Uh, we have seen about uh, energy uh, that we have now. Uh, we are now at the TRL low, so the, and uh, we were discussing also with, with the PO about the structural funding, which are very relevant at this moment uh, for energy efficiency in Europe, and that's a good driver for future, for also digitalization and beam. But I would ask uh, Andrea Perego from one team. Uh, about what is the opinion of one team uh, about uh, the market of BEAM, starting from uh, the experience on Italy, but looking at Europe, of course. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Bruno, for, uh, for your question. I think that uh, structural funding uh, could be a fantastic driver for uh, energy efficiency. And uh, in general, we do need uh, this kind of uh, funding, this kind of uh, incentives to boost the market because uh, we can see, especially in Italy, but not only, that uh, sometimes to, to pursue some higher result, uh, you need to invest money. And so uh, funding is, uh, is fundamental to, to make the, the, the companies, uh, um, let's say, to give the possibility to the different companies of each size uh, to, to have access to this kind of technology. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. And that's an important uh, opinion for one team is one of the most important, uh, let's say, uh, company in the uh, digital world in BIM in Italy and not only in Italy. Uh, so thank you, Andrea. Then coming back to the process, we have seen that the first stages of the decision, decision pro, um, making uh, for renovation process, but we go deeply now in the design stage uh, with uh, Brian, Brian O'Regan from thank, Thailand. Thank you, Bruno. And uh, uh, of course, now we are dealing with the design of heat and ventilation and air conditioning and performance evaluation and a very important uh, contribution by from Ireland. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. So, I, similar enough to Marco, I would just say I didn't actually do any of the work in this, but rather look at the design. So my team, I'm lucky enough to have a good team that does that work. Um, so I'll start off by just apologizing. I do speak very quickly. Um, I'm just part, apart from uh, the south of Ireland, and then in that part of the country, we speak very, very quickly. So I will try to slow down. Um, so BIM CPD is a web-based tool, and it consists of three separate tools. Um, the first one is the constraint checker, and that, that really looks at finding the recommended locations for we say diffusers and ducting and cables and lighting and sensors and buildings. Um, and this, this is, can be very important really for providing early indications for, for the renovation process. Um, moving on then to the performance evaluation. Like as Davide mentioned, you are pulling in a lot of data from all various sources. Um, and what we wanted to do was create a tool that would allow people to evaluate all of that data quite easily, um, regardless of your expertise level. Um, and then finally, the, the, the data management um, was, was basically looking at creating a structured database for all the data that we were gathering throughout all of the pilot sites and from the external data sources also. So in the constraint checker, like initially, just to kind of provide a proof of concept, um, we worked mainly on 2D floor plans um, and then later on in the project, moving into the 3D models using um, imported IOC files from the BIM management system. So in step one, it's really looking at taking that floor plan and creating your zones um, for each of your floors as part of your model. Um, and once you've created the zones, you actually identify those zones and the function of those zones 
because that's important as part of the process as, as we're supposed to be, if you're looking at, like say the airflow for certain spaces or functions in rooms, so like the kitchens or bedrooms um, may have different airflows, we say, d depending on, we say, uh, like if you're looking at offices. So once you've created all of your zones um, and provided some basic information such as area and size and all that kind of stuff, you move on into the, the actual configuration. Now in the configuration, you're able to prioritize, do you want to process everything by floor, by zone, by function? Um, and then secondly, you can see in the second column there with the kind of blue and red boxes, it's looking at, like you don't have to do every single thing as part of this process. You can just choo choose to just look at the, the lighting or the HVAC system. So you would put those then and you would, you would, we would add them to the, to the configuration for that process. Um, in the third part panel then, it's looking at, we went out and got as many kind of catalogs of, of different diffuser types, lamps that were available on the market, and created libraries that you could choose which libraries you wanted to use as part of your configuration. So if you were, we say, a construction company, you could, you could create your own libraries and, and just specifically use those libraries as part of your projects, or you could use some of the, the, the mainstream kind of products that were available on the market. Um, so once you've selected everything that you want to do, you're moving on to step three. And while it looks quite simple on the surface of just the floor plan with some ducting, um, a lot goes on behind the scenes and that it's, it's actually actively looking for the best position to place your diffusers. And it may be a case of that you may need two or three diffusers in the space depending on the, the size of the diffuser that you were using. Um, and the same with the lighting. So it looks at the airflow in the room as well to, to find the best locations for everything that you, that you have in, in your space. Um, following on from that then, it's, it's looking at like, basically creating the ducting and like the, the report to the heat map. So it, it's able to kind of give you those visualizations at the end of the project. So for once you've, you've, you've placed your diffusers and lamps and sensors, the next step you want to do is you actually want to connect everything up together back to a main point. So we have these algorithms that, we, that are available out there called Dijkstra's algorithm which basically, basically looks at a source node and it connects that to all the other nodes that are out there. Now, typically these will be used for, like say, the GPS system if you're traveling to a train station or another location, that it would find the best route for you to go to that location. So this also kind of ties in with the traveling salesman problem where a salesman has to go visit all of his clients and he, he only wants to visit each city once, each client once, without doubling back to kind of use fuel and time. So we use these principles to kind of connect up all of the diffusers to try to find the shortest path, which is in, in, in essence is the cheapest path. Because if you're using the least amount of HVAC for ducting and the least amount of cabling um, to connect all of your lamps and sockets together, that can reduce your costs. Now, to run this model, it actually does it in like, uh, like milliseconds. It's very, very quickly, because once it has the diffusers in place, it just connects up everything very quickly. So the, the next part of the BIM CPD then is looking at the performance evaluation. And to, to make things easier on the, the user, we used Andrew Abella's chart chooser here where you have four different types of charts. And for the user, they basically ran through the system and selected options of what's the data source, what are they trying to do, the frequency and that kind of stuff. And then what it would do was actually find the best way of presenting that data for the user. And in some cases, it would find like two or three different type of charts. So the user didn't have to find like which one, which was the best way for my data to be presented. It does it for you. Um, so that, that was one of the key, key parts of the performance evaluation. Um, in addition to that, then, I mean, we wanted to kind of create something that you could identify outliers. And we use several kind of like different types of outlier detection algorithms that are available out there so that you could apply those to your data to identify outliers. Now we wouldn't do it automatically. It's up to like we say expert knowledge of data to identify what is an outlier and what's not an outlier. And once you run those al algorithms, it would actually display all the potential outliers and you could choose to remove them or leave them in. It's up to you. Um, so that's moving on to that. So in addition then to the data viewer, there was also the measurement and verification tool which tied into another part of bim 3 eb um, And this tool run, runs as almost a standalone tool that you can do a measurement and verification project um, by just filling in the details, what type of M MMV project it is, and going through creating the baseline model, 
and choosing if it's a simple linear regression or change point regression, or it could even be a simple linear change point with filters. So it's up to the user to kind of make those adjustments to the data to create the baseline. Um, after the renovation has been complete, you would carry out a reporting period and then analyze the differences between your baseline and your reporting period to, to come at your savings amount um, or energy reduction amount. So it is depending what, what, what your what you're trying to model. Um, and in addition to that, then like after the reporting period, is that you could apply non-routine adjustments because between the baseline and the reporting period, you could have had changes in occupancy, changes in energy prices, that kind of thing. So the ability to be, a, to, to be able to apply non-routine adjustments is important. Um, and finally, the final part of the BIMCD CPD2 was data management. Um, and again, going back to what David said earlier about all this data that's being gathered and coming in from all different sources, is that there's no standard way for gathering data from sensors or meters. So what we did was we created a mapping tool. So whether you were importing directly by uploading data into BIM CPD, or if you were connecting to the BIM management system and importing via SparkQL, um, via API, that you could basically map that data source to our structured database, which was based on like Project Haystack, but also the EU uh, Open Building Stock Observatory. So once, once we had that structure in place of what we want the data to look like at the end, we were, we were able to map that then from the source to the structured database, which made the performance evaluation much more accurate because everything was using the same units. Um, so like if when, when people were uploading data, they were choosing if it was imperial or metric, and that way that we knew what, it was, what we were dealing with. Um, so once all that data was imported into the system, um, it, it, it basically that became useful then through the performance evaluation and, and measurement of verification. And I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, thank you, uh, the Irish contribution. In the meanwhile, I uh, introduce to you Andrea Mainini from Politecnico di Milano. He's chairing the task related with the uh, demonstration in the Italian demo site. I would ask you, what is your opinion about uh, the BIM-CPD development about uh, uh, comfort aspect because I know that uh, a specific uh, uh, modification has been done about comfort. Uh, so, Andrea. Yes, thank you for the introduction. So, uh, my feeling about <laughs> BIM-CPD is obviously uh, positive. We have uh, intensively used in the Italian demo site uh, because of the assessment of the comfort performances inside the uh, apartments that were uh, retrofitted uh, at the Italian demo site. So, um, the, the tool helped us uh, in uh, uh, collect all the data because here today we are talking about data and data are important, but where there are so many it's very difficult to uh, gather some useful information from them. And uh, the uh, performance evaluation tool that is uh, included in uh, BIM CPD helps us in the, in the comparison among the performances of the different apartments that, as you can expect or as you can imagine, are uh, somehow different among the different floors and among the different conditions and exposures of the building, especially in the case of the Italian demo site, it was such uh, a big building. Uh, but it uh, helped uh, us, such as the owner, in understanding uh, the uh, effectiveness of the renovation approach and uh, if it was uh, uh, positive in a sense of improving the comfort perceived by the user. Um, I really appreciate <laughs> the <laughs> capability of the tool in uh, uh, reading the data coming from the sensor and especially when some data is missing to forecast which is the tendency of the data just to cover that blind spot that you have and that when you analyze the data is always an issue. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Andrea. And uh, we go back to uh, Marco. Uh, thank you. That's, the, uh, I think, one of the most original tools because uh, Beam Planner uh, is using uh, strongly uh, ontologies and in data. Uh, and that's very interesting because is not like uh, the usual uh, planning because it, it's a location-based uh, planning and uh, uh, very interesting. And BTT is giving a very good contribution to this. Marco, thank, thank you. you. Very briefly, the basic idea for this kind of tool is, is a cloud-based software for detailed planning and tracking of site activities, especially in renovation projects. And the intended user for this kind of a developer is, is a site manager or a person who is uh, responsible of the activities 
management at site. And uh, this is based on idea on, on weekly basis planning of the next week activities at um, same time track or record the real uh, status of ongoing activities. And of course, the basic target is to improve the, the uh, productivity, reduce the disruptions at site, and uh, also provide the up-to-date information where the activities at site are going, and share that information to the other stakeholders in the project. We are trying or have a right to recognize what is needed for site management in a renovation project, especially housing renovation project, where the occupants typically may live in, in the, at the uh, renovation site, in the building. So there are needs to ensure the safety and security, reduce any disturbances. Of course, we can, cannot get rid of those, we, but we can try to reduce and especially notify occupants when they are coming uh, noise or something, other disturbances. And also we can uh, negotiate or discuss with the client with this kind of a digital channel about the work when they can be scheduled in the apartments. And we have selected as a basis for this kind of a tool the existing uh, management method, so-called location-based uh, management system, LBS, uh, MS, where, which is based on, on so-called location-based management. And uh, we have therefore created this tool which has some, some fe features. We do have at the project uh, website some detailed videos where you can check what kind of features there are. I will concentrate in, in some issues in, or topics in, in this presentation. As I said, that the idea is that the uh, master schedule is uh, downloaded from, from the, the master schedule that is agreed with the contractor, the uh, owner, is used as starting point for this. It is idea that it may be detailed with some sub activities, but especially predefined work locations where, for example, in this case, the facade renovation is going on. The one facade is uh, divided in, in two parts and the activities are separately de uh, scheduled on those locations. This may remind some 4D scheduling, but uh, please consider this, uh, this as a management method where it's important to recognize this uh, role of a um, uh, work location where the scheduling is done. But as I said, you can get some, some better understanding of, of the uh, features from, from those videos, but I would like to, uh, perhaps I, one, one use case i like to uh, share here. The idea is, for example, that we use uh, this BIM management system for sharing information to the other bim for eb tools. In this case, the bim for occupant as this um, contractor plans and uh, schedule the activities at site, the data is, is retrieved by the BIM management system and shared with the, the for occupant and the uh, occupant can give some feedback that is flown, the data is, is returned to BIM Planet. One idea here is that the BIM management system do know who are the uh, tenants or, or occupants in apartments. So in this case, we don't have to care that much uh, of, for example, these privacy issues in BIM Planner. We just plan the work in uh, some spaces and the BIM management system link those to the right occupants and share the information to them. But as I said, I'd like to say a few words of the technical background because one, one let's say, new, new approach in this tool, it is not, you can find here several uh, BIM-based management tools. We can't, let's say, compete with them, but we have made some, some back, back end or background work utilizing some new technologies. And uh, what we user can see is that BIM Planner user interface, top of this picture, there are cloud-based backend, and which has the functionality of, of the tool. We do make some IFC conversions. We retrieve the IFC file from, um, 
uh, team management system, we convert the IFC, and um, in this case, we can convert only non-geographic uh, information IFC according to IFC all ontology in the format of RDF data. So this RDF data is this linked data. It is a specific format, uh, if you may know. And uh, this kind of RDF data is stored typically in a graph databases. And um, in this application, we had a, a graph database Virtuoso. But of course, we have a, had a, quite a few other open source uh, software tools for, for creating this software. And actually, in this approach, we do have this RDF data, these IFC entities, but also those activity information, the work location, and all, of course, this planet and actual timing. So this uh, RDF data is following the DICON ontologies developed in this project, and this is a application of, of the, those uh, ontologies. But there are some, some issues to, or point of views in here. This SparkQL endpoint where we can retrieve the data from graph database, the current standard for, for this SparkQL is, is uh, not including dedicated authorization and authentication topics. In this case, we had to create a separate authentication for the BIM management system to retrieve the activity data. And uh, it is some kind of a restriction for, for this linked data. And uh, in current format, this park well is, is uh, usable in all open data or just the closed data, for example, inside some co uh, company for managing some data lake database. But in, in such uh, area where it's needed to share the information with uh, different um, user rights, we have to create this uh, authentication level differently. There are also this uh, GraphQL interface. In some ways, we also consider that could we create a interface that is, let's say, uh, some kind of middle of the typical current REST API functions, which are very dedicated way to retrieve the data. And on the other hand, very free uh, retrieving method, this SparkQL endpoint, this GraphQL has some, some um, ideas and functionalities to handle this kind of a method. But in any case, uh, we do have a, we have to ha uh, solve some, some practical, practical uh, uh, topics and, uh, and um, we are solving some, some use cases. What I'm saying about these technical topics, it, it is something background that we are trying to enforce or uh, support some kind of interoperability with common public uh, ontology where we could uh, retrieve the data to the other systems in, in a specific way. And we have some, some conclusions for this, and uh, I guess that uh, these are, will be available in, in, in the slides uh, available to, to the uh, audience. I think I end up here. Thank you, thank you, Marco. And uh, as I told you, that's very interesting. Uh, if you are interested, again, you can come to A38. We will show you uh, the functioning of these tools. Uh, and before going to uh, Andrea, uh, in the meanwhile, I invite Andrea to go on the, I ask uh, Giuseppina, Giuseppe Tola from Region Lombardy, to, and I ask him, uh, her, um, uh, what is the opinion of Region Lombardy and Aller? Aller, I see Claudia, uh, I don't remember the name. Uh, okay, Fabrizio. Uh, they are managing uh, the Aller demo site uh, with the help of Andrea, of course. But uh, what is the opinion of Region Lombardy about the application of uh, planning, being planner, and so on? Uh, can you hear me? Okay. This is Giusitola from Lombardy Region and uh, we are part of the project uh, and uh, it was a good uh, uh, opportunity for us uh, to understand how this work because uh, for uh, our, uh, our uh, organization uh, where we are uh, a region so we are a department 
in French, but uh, it's uh, a side of uh, a small uh, European country. So we have uh, only 11 million people. We have a big country, <laughs> almost a country, and we have plenty of uh, social housing. And uh, uh, our uh, building stock is quite old and uh, needs uh, maintenance, uh, uh, refurbishment, etc. And we have also a legal, legal um, um, obligation to use BIM in uh, public procurement. Uh, and uh, we are uh, working to be uh, able to do this in, uh, in a few years. And so it's a uh, good to experiment BIM planner and uh, the other tools, because uh, in our pilot uh, in Monza, we uh, used uh, experiment uh, all the tools uh, of BIM 4D, uh, was uh, a tool that was uh, uh, tried by our uh, technical staff, uh, uh, not only Lombardy region, because we are uh, al almost uh, always uh, managing uh, um, government and so uh, higher questions but from uh, experimented uh, for uh, uh, by our technicians uh, Aller, which are here <laughs> and are in the project with us which is uh, a, our society for managing uh, our building stock so they experimented and it was a good tool and uh, we are uh, uh, ready to uh, not ready to use it uh, in our uh, everyday work, but uh, we are getting ready to use it because there, uh, it's a process. We need to have uh, a little bit of time, we need courses, we need to get ready to this change because it's not uh, so easy for a public administration to change, but we are working on it. And so thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Judy. Uh, you mentioned your, uh, the social housing uh, asset, uh, how many uh, buildings, apartments do you have in Region Lombardy for social housing? Uh, we have about uh, 170,000 uh, units. Uh, for managed, uh, managed by Lombardy Region, uh, it's uh, 95,000. Uh, the other ones are uh, managed by municipalities. So it's a big stock. And, um, I remember that with you, we have, go, we have gone uh, ahead with a beam, uh, with uh, some training. And what do you think about the future? We are developing also the beam guidelines with the help of Cecilia, who was there somewhere, and uh, Alberto. Uh, what do you think about the future of beam for, from the point of view of Region Lombardy? Well, uh, it's an obligation. It's, uh, we are, it's mandatory for us because we have big works uh, to do. And uh, we are uh, uh, preparing, I was saying, uh, for this. And so courses, uh, uh, learning for our technical people, and guidelines. Uh, this is uh, uh, deliverable so which, uh, in which we are working uh, together with Politecnico di Milano, because uh, they are working uh, for private sector. And we are working uh, with their help, too, because uh, we need uh, this help in the public uh, sector. And so we are uh, uh, giving this uh, to our alerts, uh, our cooperation, uh, people who uh, work for us, because it's uh, necessary to reach a standard uh, and decide how to do things, uh, to have a common data environment, to have uh, uh, interoperability of uh, systems uh, of data it's uh, very important because we have to manage uh, to manage uh, a lot of buildings a lot of data and uh, it's mandatory that uh, we can talk with each other we can have a standard so it's uh, important for us thank you thank you Giusy thank you to Reggio Lombardy and to Aller for this uh, important help and support I'd ask uh, uh, Andrea to go on uh, with the involvement uh, uh, of the occupants. So that's from the social point of view, that's important, more important for Europe and for us as a public uh, um, university. And uh, uh, because our goal finally in managing the building is towards uh, quality performance from the point of view of the user. So Andrea, what do you, if you want to speak about before occupants? Okay, uh, as I said, I'm Andrea Mainini from Politecnico di Milano. Today I'm here to substitute my colleague from uh, Suite 5, that is the company that uh, developed the tool. So I'm the person in charge to do it because uh, we mostly use it at site, at demo site, 
and uh, uh, we were in contact directly with the uh, occupants because the, the main purpose of uh, uh, these uh, BIM occupant tools uh, is just to include uh, inhabitants in pre and post uh, uh, renovation activities to engage them to um, uh, improve their participation uh, because uh, we find out that it is uh, uh, interesting also to uh, raise their acceptance in the kind of activities that are <coughs> normally done uh, during the renovation process. So uh, we have this tool that is able to uh, record uh, real-time data and uh, uh, historic data coming from sensors installed uh, inside the apartment and to gather the uh, user feedbacks about the comfort perception inside the space, uh, such as to uh, enable a sort of co-creation process in which uh, the inhabitants can uh, provide their availability and communicate directly with the construction company to inform them about when they will be available uh, at the apartment to um, uh, be present while the activities done at the apartment will be done. Uh, and on the other hand, we also have the possibility to uh, ask the uh, inhabitants to enhance the information included inside the BIM model through a tool that we will see uh, later, such as uh, to uh, raise a question about uh, security and about safety, um, then describing what happened during the renovation process and uh, to inform the uh, construction company uh, promptly. Uh, what, uh, how this part is done, so we have on the background uh, sort of a AI um, statistical engine uh, that uh, help us to uh, gather and analyze uh, the data and the data coming from the sensors such as the common data environment that is the beam management system that we have seen before. In this way, uh, we are able to uh, evaluate, as an example, the occupancy profiles uh, collected by um, present sensors that are installed inside the apartment, or to uh, evaluate promptly which are the personalized comfort condition perceived by the user that can be different by one apartment to another, such as to collect uh, all the uh, indoor environmental quality uh, variables and energy statistics that are significant for the uh, inhabitants in the uh, apartment. To this, this is just uh, to give you an example of what we have done at the Italian demo site. Initially, uh, we, uh, we have planned to sensorize nine uh, apartments that then became uh, 13 after we had made some engagement activities directly with the uh, inhabitants. So 13 apartments that are representative of the overall performance of the building. And uh, in each one, we have sensor for uh, uh, illuminance, sound, um, temperature, humidity, and CO2 constant measurement, such as uh, uh, energy consumption. All the data are uh, collected together by an app that communicates through the dedicated APIs with the BIM management system and update the data uh, in the uh, IFC uh, model that we have seen uh, before. Just to give you uh, a glimpse of the overview, this is the uh, dashboard that is seen by the inhabitants in which we have the real-time uh, uh, data uh, that describe the indoor condition of the environment, such as a view of the outdoor condition, because we also think that this part could be uh, interesting for inhabitants to um, better suit his uh, um, or her um, habitudes. And then the part related to the user feedback with uh, a very easy uh, Likert scale approach the uh, inhabitant is prompted to uh, just ping, which is his status of comfort in terms of thermal comfort and in terms of light comfort. These data are then uh, processed by the engine included in the tool. Uh, as uh, um, the, um, the possibility to uh, see the real-time data, they also have the possibility to evaluate uh, some historical data over a period that can be decided. We, have, uh, we were collecting the data since uh, eight months, so we have uh, uh, a good number of data, a huge number of data, as I said <laughs> before, and that can be seen by the inhabitants to understand which are the temperature tendencies, the humidity tendencies, or the uh, illuminance availability in his or her apartment, such as most importantly, uh, most importantly in um, this period uh, we're talking about COVID-19, 
the indoor air quality of the space. We have just monitored CO2 uh, concentration, but we have the possibility to link all the other data depending on the kind of sensor that we want to install. So uh, as an example, BOC or uh, PM 2.5 uh, content. Uh, while the energy uh, meters collect the data, these are plotted and uh, available uh, for the inhabitants just to have an energy history, an energy view of the uh, energy consumption of the building. And they can have the hourly values such as all the daily and the total statistics that can be useful also for the inhabitants to uh, start uh, uh, understanding which could be the best strategy for saving, especially in such a period in which we uh, are expecting a huge increase in the cost of the uh, electricity. Uh, this is another important uh, part, the one I called uh, the co-creation uh, approach. Uh, you can see the uh, inhabitants have a calendar view uh, that include all the activities that will be soon done uh, inside the apartment. They have the possibility to click on it and have to uh, see uh, the duration of this activity, such as the um, suggested beginning and the end of the activity, and they have the, uh, now the possibility to propose a different end or a different beginning, such as a different duration, in accordance with their availability in the apartment. Uh, we have uh, tested it. And we have used it and we found out that the uh, inhabitants uh, really appreciated it because of the uh, possibility to um, better manage the schedule, for example, at work and be present in time uh, in the apartment just for the renovation activities. And this uh, uh, speeded up also the renovation process because the construction company uh, have uh, uh, less uh, uh, possibility to uh, not find out the inhabitants at site. Um, then the safety and security alert is just a list uh, of the alerts uh, that are uh, raised by the uh, inhabitants in which we have uh, a timestamp that uh, is automatically created every time that we have this uh, security alert. And then the uh, inhabitants can describe the uh, alert itself. You can uh, rate it by importance and add a photo to better describe the alert that, that happened. Uh, this information later on will be seen through another uh, dedicated app that is uh, uh, mainly addressed to the building owner or the construction company that have a complete view of what happens in all the apartments. Yes, um, the building um, and then uh, the company have the possibility to raise other personalized alert to the uh, inhabitants, such as the inhabitants have also additional possibility to in, uh, enhance the existing building model, make it dynamic, no more static, just uh, adding which are the services including in their apartment and how they can change uh, in time. So um, considering this, we, we have developed two different uh, building applications, one mainly dedicated to the, for the uh, inhabitants and one for the building managers, such as different ways of visualizing and analyzing data through uh, the tool. And this will be helpful for the renovation uh, project that we have gathered. Uh, so mm, I just want to conclude saying that we are talking about data, we are talking uh, about digitalization, but if we are uh, working with uh, uh, people, and in this case uh, inhabitants, uh, we also need to think that maybe some of them have uh, low competencies in uh, the use of the digital tool. So uh, we found out uh, it's a research project and we found out some difficulties, let me say in this sense, and to overcome these uh, and to engage and continuously engage their participation and to foster them in providing feedbacks in the tool, we have organized different mom moments such as preliminary engagement activities, preliminary demonstration with selected uh, inhabitants, and wor dedicated workshop in which we have uh, uh, met all the uh, inhabitants providing suggestions also for energy saving, but uh, also suggesting how to use the tool, plus the need for a one-to-one -one meeting. So uh, it's uh, very uh, useful, it's very interesting. The feedback uh, by the inhabitants uh, was good, but also the effort required in some cases uh, can be uh, important. So thank you so much. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, and uh, thank you, everybody. I leave a video. Uh, just to, uh, in, uh, while the video is starting about the project, I invite you to come to A38 stand. If you want to see, go to the website. You have all the information, the video, you can see everything. You can contact us 
for every information. Thank you. If there is the video about the project, we can go. Should come. I hope. Your terrace navigator. They say the that it should start. Buildings, floors, and rooms is displayed. As a first step of the Oterra's workflow, a requirement template will be created. Oh, this is the, just a very short presentation of Oterra's. The last about uh, the user can bugs. choose standardized automation, automation and functions control system. in the central tree view. Developed by TUD Dresden. But as Dresden, they cannot be here. On the right side, you can get information about the different functionalities. We show you uh, as about uh, the bidding automation and control system. Otera supports the user in his selection to create valid templates. On the top and in the troubleshooting view, the user gets information about the validity of his selections. For the selection of the constant light, it is defined that the present state of persons must be considered. If there are no issues, the requirement template is valid and the template can be attached to all rooms of this room type. Afterwards, the so-called abstract template can be generated automatically. The abstract template is based on the German guideline VDA 3813. It defines a lot of room automation functions for lighting, shading and HVAC. The functions are defined in a platform and vendor independent manner. So, they are suitable for a procurement process. The user can find the sensors and actuators in the upper area, the needed control functions in the lower area and also a visualization of how they are connected. The user can now start the device selection process and get several solutions. You can open them to get further information about the different solutions, like the costs or the amount of devices. The user can also preview the solutions. In the outline view he sees that he needs two devices. The devices have different capabilities. The user can also see the unused functions it might be important for further renovation scenarios. And if the user has decided for a specific detail template, he can apply it and the solution will be attached to all rooms with the corresponding abstract design. Now, in practice, the real devices will be installed in the rooms and connected together like seen in the detail template. In our terrace, the physical template represents the real installed devices in the rooms like digital twins. In case the light actuator, here realized with a BCU device, is broken or should be replaced because of other retrofit reasons, its state can be changed to needs replacement. And a system redesign can be started on the digital twin of the system. This is similar to a device selection process as seen before, but only the marked devices will be changed. Here the user gets two solutions. The first solution is quite similar to the original one. The light actuator should be replaced by another device of the same type. And the second solution uses a different device for the light actuator functionality and the user chooses this solution in the end. Now in practice the user has to replace the device in the room and also to heal the physical layer by deleting the old 
detailed template and regenerating the physical layer. The new device is now available on all models of our terrace. All elements of our terrace can be renamed at any given time for better usability of the tool. As a last step in this video, the project will be stored in the Otera store for further usage by other BIM for EUB tools. Okay, thank you. Uh, we can go to the video, final video. Uh, that's about the conclusion. I would BIM, thank you, EEP, everybody. I thank uh, Marco, to make building renovation projects Brian, more efficient Andrea, and Eva. effective. The online tools support building maintenance for public and private owners, inhabitants, designers, and construction service and facility management companies. The tools were tested and deployed at free demonstration buildings in diverse climates in Europe. The free buildings are in Tampere, Finland, Warsaw, Poland, and Monza, Italy. During the renovation of the Italian demonstration building in Via della Verona, Patrizia helped her mother to use BIM for occupants. The application allows her to access personalized information and historical records related to home temperature, humidity, illuminance, and indoor air quality collected by sensors installed at her house. The app also enables residents to keep up to date with work and renovations being carried out on their building and report any hazards or renegotiate scheduled work. Ma avevo l'app che mi era stata data eh, per poter aggiustare il discorso dei serramenti, quando farli venire, come poter avere la disposizione per eh, poter chiedere i permessi perché lei da sola non la lasciavo. Sensors at all demonstration buildings collected data available in the BIM management system and used by BIM for occupants and BIM planner. During the renovation process, I used four different tools, uh, BIM management system, which uh, uh, help us to uh, share data of the project, uh, BIM planner, uh, which uh, um, make uh, easier, easier uh, the, the planning of the project, and BIM CPD and BIM for occupants, which uh, help us to manage the data collected by the sensor. BIM Planner provides a digital environment to share up-to-date information about plans and site progress operations with all participants of a renovation project. The BIM for EEB Fast Mapping Toolkit uses augmented reality to scan existing buildings. Using a sensor stick and headset, architects, engineers and construction professionals can collect data of hidden elements inside the building walls, such as studs, water pipes and electrical ducts. At the site in Finland, BIMESA was used to assess and compare several energy refurbishment design options. In the early stages of the design, the tool facilitates the decision-making process, enabling architects and engineers to provide solutions that best fit the client's requirements while optimizing the energy use and comfort indoors for the occupants. In Horsov, Poland, the BIM CPD tool was used with its three main functionalities, the constraint checking tool, the performance evaluation tool, and the data management tool. BIM's BIM management system stores and makes information available from different relational databases to the six BIM for EEB tools. In Monza, on-site refurbishments include a new coat of insulation on the facade of the building and external windows replaced with new PVC windows. The BIM for EEB toolkit enables more transparency in public procurement. Communication among stakeholders throughout the renovation stages increasing productivity. Better management and coordination of information generated by renovation projects. Sensors provide accurate information which increases the efficiency of the renovation process. Better activity tracking throughout the construction process reduces disruption on site and can potentially reduce costs. 
For more information, access the BIM for EEB website and follow us on our social media. Okay. Uh, thank you all. Uh, au revoir. Uh, we, will be, uh, we are now going to stand A38 uh, uh, 38, si vous voulez voir quelque chose. E, uh, and then we will be in next uh, month in um, Sweden. Then we will go to Brussels and to um, Ireland uh, for the next month. Uh, but please visit our uh, website and come to visit in uh, stand A38. So, uh, au revoir et au stand A38. Thank you. Merci.